Batman was one of the most famous superheroes, if not the most famous superhero in the world. Uh, everyone knows his origins and his story, and one of the key parts of his character is that he never kills his enemies, unless we're talking about Zack But personally I don't count those films, and in the real DC world, Batman has never killed. Or has he? From time to time, circumstances have occurred where killing someone is the only option available to him. And this is five times that Batman has been forced to kill. Number 5. Ra al Ghul In the Batman Arkham Knight DLC, Season of Infamy, one of the most wanted missions revolves around Ra al Ghul. Now as most of you know, Ra is the head of the League of Assassins and is over 600 years old, and he has died many times in those years. He has been brought back to life and had his life prolonged by using his Lazarus Pits, which can cure any ailment and even bring a person back to life. However, in Raish's case, he has been using the pits for so long that they are losing their effect on him. You've brought him back too many times. The Lazarus dream's all that's keeping him alive. Basically, he's just too old and is dying. But there is one way to save his life, using an older version of the Lazarus Pits chemical, which is deep underground in Gotham City. And with this, his life can be saved. The rebels have found another pit, a purer source. A sample of his essence is all he would need. Unfortunately, the League of Assassins is in civil war, and Ra's al Ghul's own daughter, Nyssa, is leading the revolt and is trying to kill him and take over the League. Does Ra's know his daughter fights for the rebels? The rebels fight for me. And because of this, his soldiers are unable to get to the chemical. So they send Batman after it, saying that if he does not retrieve it, then Gotham will suffer. Traitors to the League conspire to stop the glorious resurrection of Ra's al Ghul. We will see Gotham burn before we let the rebels hurt our master. So Batman gets the Lazarus Pit chemical and then has a choice. To save Ra's al Ghul's life with the serum, or to destroy it and let Ra's al Ghul finally die. You weren't a good man, Ray. But you had conviction. Stop him! Kill him! This is actually really good because the player actually gets to decide which path to take. But I personally always kill Raish. The guy is an evil dictator and mass murderer, and the world's better off without him. He's a dangerous, uncompromising zealot, sir. Restored to full strength, there's no telling what he'll do, or who he might hurt. Now, you might argue that this isn't technically Batman killing him. Is preventing some ungodly resurrection truly the same as taking a life? But what you have to keep in mind is this. If someone has a terminal illness, and you have the cure to that illness in your hand, and you choose not to inject them with it, then you have effectively killed them. In some cases, not saving someone when you easily can does count as murder, and Batman's actions directly lead to Ra's al Ghul dying, so he chose to let him die, which in my mind still counts as killing. And if you do decide to save Ra's al Ghul, then he kills his own daughter Nyssa and continues to use the League for his own evil purposes. <laughs> So his death is definitely the right option, which even he agrees with. Detective... <sighs> Proud of you. Number 4. Dracula The film The Batman vs Dracula is exactly what it sounds like. Batman fights Dracula. Dracula is resurrected in Gotham by the Penguin, who becomes his enthralled servant. I'm Penguin, I'll be your server. Dracula then infects a large number of citizens, including the Joker, with his venom and turns them all into vampires. Funny, you're my second Batman tonight, and you're both pains in the neck. Fortunately, Batman is able to synthesize a cure for the vampirism and turns the citizens back to normal. He also tries to turn Dracula into a human again, but the serum doesn't work on him. You may have cured my human victims of their disease, but no earthly medicine can cure a supernatural affliction. Now since he can't cure him or imprison him, Batman is left with only one choice, to kill him. And using artificial lighting to mimic the sun's radiation, he does kill him. Yeah! 
Now, seeing how Dracula is a vampire and can, at least in theory, be resurrected from his ashes, you could argue that this isn't a death. However, I'm counting it because turning anyone, even a vampire, to dust qualifies as killing someone. And even if you want to argue that he is undead and not truly alive, I don't think that really counts because if rigor mortis hasn't set in and you're not brain dead, then legally you are alive. So vampires, even though they call themselves the undead, are technically speaking alive. And even if Dracula could be resurrected from the ashes, it's irrelevant because resurrection by its very definition means bringing someone who is dead back to life. So Dracula was killed by Batman. I shall sweep that into the dustbin straight away. Number three, Devil Ray. In the TV show Justice League Unlimited, Gorilla City is being attacked by Gorilla Grodd as he plans to use their city's technology to turn the whole world's human population into gorillas. And yes, that is actually the plot, no matter how weird it sounds. Oh, come on! But the weirdest part is that it's actually a really good and compelling story, which does go to show that any story, no matter how silly, if it is done right, can be good. But anyway, the Justice League obviously stops Gorilla Grodd, having been warned by Deadman, who is a ghost who is able to possess humans. I need your help on a mission of vengeance. Now, don't be alarmed, but I'm not Superman. I'm a ghost inhabiting his body. After the League have stopped Gorilla Grodd, one of his henchmen, Devil Ray, is about to attack them. They don't see it coming, but Deadman does, and the only way to stop him is to possess Batman and shoot Devil Ray. So it is Devilman who grabs the gun and pulls the trigger, but since he's using Batman's body, this does still kind of count as Batman doing the deed. At least physically, even if he wasn't actually in control. But it is important to note that this is done against his will and he is disgusted with what Deadman has made him do. Bruce, Deadman took over your body. It wasn't your fault. And it's also worth noting that Deadman didn't actually intend to kill Devil Ray. So of course he succeeds and beats Owlman, but he does this by transporting Owlman and the bomb that is about to detonate to another dimension. The bomb detonates and Owlman is killed. It doesn't matter. Admittedly, Batman only did this to save the universe and it was the right thing to do. He had no other choice. But he still killed Owlman as it was the only way he could save the universe and it's only one of the two people that he kills in this film. Number one, Johnny Quick. You see, in order to follow Owlman and stop him, a portal needs to be opened. And this could only be opened by a speedster vibrating at the right frequency to open the portal. Someone vibrating at the right speed could piggyback on Owlman's carrier wave and open a portal. The Flash naturally volunteers, but Batman says he can't do it. You're too slow. What? I know your limitations. You can't possibly reach the speed necessary to pull this off. So the evil version of the Flash, Johnny Quick, steps in and does the job instead. It could be dangerous. The bloody universe is at stake. Of course it's dangerous. However, after Batman has killed Owlman and returns, it is revealed that using his powers to create the portal has aged Johnny Quick to a withered old man. Now you may think that Batman didn't know this, but... And all that rubbish about me being faster than Flash. You knew this was going to happen. Good one, mate. So Batman knew whoever opened the portal would age and die and deliberately stop this from happening to his Flash by letting it happen to Johnny Quick. And his actions directly lead to Johnny Quick dying, meaning Batman is responsible. And that is five people that Batman has killed. Though I feel I should mention that in the game Batman Arkham City, Batman has a cure to an illness that is killing the Joker. The Joker attacks Batman to get the cure off of him, but in the process he actually causes Batman to drop the antidote and it is destroyed, to which Batman says, You want to know something funny? Even after everything you've done, I would have saved you. <laughs> that actually is pretty funny! <laughs> Though it is later revealed in the video game Batman Arkham Knight that Batman was not going to give him the cure but was going to let the Joker die. You said you would have shared. <laughs> you couldn't admit I'd won, could you? Not even as a parting gift. But now I'm on the inside. Ooh, we both know the truth. 
So that could be argued as a death by Batman's hand, as he was intending to let the Joker die. But I haven't counted it as it was really the Joker's fault, and Batman may have decided to save him at the last minute. Though of course we'll never know for sure. Now some of you might think that these don't count as direct murders, and with the exception of the murder done while he was possessed by Dead Man, you could argue this point. But you have to remember that these deaths occurred directly through actions that Batman deliberately took knowing it result in his enemy's deaths. So that counts as killing in my book, even though it was his only real choice in the moment. But if you disagree, then please let us know in the comments which deaths you think were, or were not, Batman's fault. And if there are any other people that Batman has killed that you think should have been on this list. And I'd just like to say a quick thank you to those of you who made this video possible by